Hello and welcome to the show. Wait a minute, what's that? The show? Not welcome to the vlog? Well, yes, because this is the Crick Show 2019. Friday was a limited attendance preview day, but the queue was long, although once inside it was refreshingly empty. The first order of business was to buy a hat as the sun was beaming down. Then down to the marina, where we'd lined up loads of boat viewings over two days. If you don't book in advance, you often can't get on the boats, and this is the first year I was organised enough to sort it. To Mothership Marine, first of all, an Australian company marketing a fully electric narrowboat powered by a stash of lead carbon batteries. That is some chunky wiring in there. Around two kilowatts of flat solar panels line the roof. The boat's designer was keen to show they can be walked on without damage. There's also a silenced generator in the well deck under a fibreglass cover for the inevitable overcast and miserable days when solar's not providing anything useful. Inside, this is a very unusual fit-out, starting with reclaimed hospital floorboards for much of the woodwork, including the cabinets. Being all electric, an induction hob is provided in the galley, and there's an oven too. Dining is at a breakfast bar. I'm not a fan of these, but it does make for more space in the saloon area, which here features an amazing stove, retro TV and two chaises long down either side. Very posh indeed. Apparently the stove is converted from a kind of weight used to hold fishing nets down. It looks amazing and the fireproof back plate is formed of a carbon fibre material used in Formula One motor racing. In the bathroom, there's a conventional shower, although I'd probably want that porthole frosted. No one wants to see me naked. Unusually, the toilet holding tank is vertical next to the cubicle, so that space isn't taken up elsewhere, such as under the bed. Speaking of which, how about this? Tower bridge style and electrically powered, of course. This is the most unconventional narrowboat I think I've ever seen. Outside, the current, pardon the pun, interest in electric boats is hinted at by this stall. Let us turn to more conventional fare and bickerstaff, who are unusual in that they build narrowboats to a template design and then sell them as finished items, rather than making custom boats specific to a buyer's individual taste. The Bickerstaff customer just has the choice of a few tweaks from the options list, such as conventional or these bonded windows. The upside of this approach is that the boats are cheaper to make and so great value. They had two on display, with about 10 grand's worth of options distinguishing them, otherwise they're pretty much identical. They're all reverse layout, so they start with the galley at the back. Oven, grill and microwave on your left as you come in, Plenty of workspace, cupboards and the hob and fridge also to port. We helped ourselves to some of the pims in that jug and it was rather delicious. Thanks, Bicker Boats. In the more expensive boat, you get a Belfast sink to starboard. Now, I don't like these, but I know I'm generally wrong about most things. A Pullman dinette follows, which can make a spare bed. It's raised so you can see out of the hatch. And a saloon area with sofa, stove and TV is where you'll spend your evenings. Central heating is provided as well as that stove. The bathroom is a walkthrough design and it is the only one of this type I've ever liked. It's huge and the shower is massive. You get a sink and cupboard in the corner with a cassette toilet which is emptied from a hatch in the saloon. An inline bed at the bow makes for a nice place to sleep with cupboards over the headboard and a wardrobe at the far end. In the bow you get a nice covered seating area and access to a bow thruster. Bicker Boats are also the only company I know who put a camera at the bow as standard so you can see what's coming on a screen at the back. Their other, slightly cheaper boat had standard windows but is much the same inside, galley at the back and so on but notice the conventional metal sink and drainer instead of the posh ceramic one. 
I think the washing machine is one of the options you can choose. This version also had the TV mounted to the side wall in the saloon instead of up by the stovepipe. On the roof, flat solar panels are glued in place. And no one's going to miss you coming with those. In the corner of the marina was a space dedicated to traditional working boats. These heritage craft date from the days when telephone numbers only had three digits and no local dial code. Some are privately owned, others are run by restoration societies and clubs, and even the CRT itself in the case of Sculptor. The life some of these boats have been through is amazing. Let's have a look around some more new boats, this time at the Aintree stand, who you may recall from Vlog 123. They had two on show, this one the longest of their Beetle range at 40 feet, costing 55 grand. Like Bickerstaff boats, the Beetles are a standardised range with an options list, and they're aimed at entry-level boating. The 40-footer is everything you need for a holiday boat, but ultra-compact. Here's the saloon with L-shaped sofa and storage under. You get a traditional stove in the corner. The U-shaped galley has sink, hob, oven, grill and fridge. And in the bathroom there's a cassette loo, basin and shower. I like this to save space. The bathroom uses two half doors. and the bedroom has a standard inline four foot wide mattress. At the back, a compact square cruiser stern is your socialising space. The second Aintree boat is that bright green one alongside, built as a bit of a project to catch people's eyes by the boss, and catch the eye it certainly does, with everything aboard in various shades of green. They're thinking of offering this, albeit with a choice of colours, as a standardised layout and want your feedback on it. Like most boats these days, it's reverse layout. Galley at the back, plenty of workspace here. A raised Pullman dinette converts to a second berth as usual. And there's a nice hatch over for extra light. A telly on the wall in the saloon has storage around it. And you get the standard Morso Squirrel stove in the corner, right in the heart of the living area. I rather liked these standalone chairs, and also the bookcase they built onto the back of the dinette. The walkthrough bathroom has a decent shower with storage for towels alongside. And radiator heating is hidden in these wooden covers running the length of the boat. There's great storage both under and above the bed, as well as the usual wardrobe at the end. Just along from Aintree were Automarine and this diesel electric boat. Automarine made Pamela May 2, seen in vlogs 168 and 174. Underneath that semi-trad stern lies a substantial Beta Marine diesel plus the electric motor, and a large bank of traction batteries supplies the 48 volt power. This is topped up by 1.3 kilowatts of flat panel solar on the roof, and the owners report it's giving them decent cruising range in the current sunshine. It's all monitored by Automarine's own touchscreen control panel. Inside, very modern indeed, very sleek and crisp. This boat came third in the public vote for best narrowboat at the show. Splashes of colour liven it up and make it homely, the saloon quite large due to having a breakfast bar instead of a dinette. Here's the bedroom leading to the well deck. I really like the fake grass giving a garden feeling. I might nick that idea. With no gas bottles at the front, 
The bow locker is vast to include two electric foldable bikes and the builders even put a charger in the locker so the bikes will always be ready for action. PVC bow doors are unusual but they don't look bad and offer multi-lock security compared to the traditional wood and metal doors that can be crowbarred open. Now let's see the offering from Swan Boats. It's on for just under a hundred grand. The back has a nice social cruiser stern with seating and yet again it's reverse layout, kitchen at the back. For some reason the L-shaped galley appeals to me much more than just two parallel lines of units. The fridge freezer unit is just to the left of the sink. Opposite you get more workspace and storage. I like how the back steps flip up. Electrics are on the left as you enter, including a 3 kilowatt inverter and solar controller. With only a breakfast bar, the saloon area is a wide open space, loads of room for a sofa and tables. You've got nice looking radiators for heating as well as a stove, though I would still rather have a diesel unit, these things make too much dust. The loo is a ceramic version, which is said to feel more like a household one rather than a boat toilet. In the bedroom, overhead cupboards give lots of storage without feeling like they were imposing into the space. More cupboards at the end and under the step is the water pump, which makes it quite accessible if needs be. And that ended the Friday tours. Saturday dawned bright, sunny and very, very busy. Loads of vloggers there who I mostly forgot to film, except the wife, Lorna, London boat girl, and newcomers, the lovely narrowboat chef with their faithful companion, boat dog Pixel. To the boats and sea glass from narrowboats of distinction. Distinct is certainly the word for this paint job. This is a totally custom boat that's been the dream of its owner for 30 years. Inside is unique, a country cottage feel with pastel shades. It's a reverse layout, starting with a comfy saloon, one of two on this boat, including a stove with oven built on top. The breakfast bar is more like a half dinette, which I prefer to tall stools at a counter, and there are unusual touches all around, like this hanging shelf and these lights. In the bilge under a hatch, cool storage for fruit, veg and drinks, one of three of these on the boat, including this glass-fronted wine cooler in the kitchen. There's all the usual stuff here in a compact L shape, but luxury touches include a dishwasher and there's a microwave behind a cupboard door. The end of this cupboard slides in and out for easy access and more workspace. The first of two toilets is a composter and it's next to the guest double bunk beds. Then we have the pièce de résistance, three and a half grand's worth of incinerating toilet which turns poo to ash. And at the bow, the second saloon slash dinette slash working area slash sleeping area, which leads onto a very sunny and sociable bow. Not all the boats were on the water. We went to visit finesse boats in amongst the stalls. They had two narrowboats and a wide beam on display. Let's start with the narrowboat, which was for sale for about 130 grand, as I recall. Surprise, surprise, reverse layout. Galley at the back, L-shaped dinette giving lots of space for guests alongside the saloon. Their second narrowboat was a customer boat and immediately much more warm and welcoming and homely. A massive galley and I liked these slimline under gunnel cupboards making maximum use of space. Breakfast bars are clearly all the rage at the show, though I always wobble on those high chairs. The saloon had a very long sofa and a colossal telly on the bulkhead, which seemed like an odd place to put it to me. 
The bathroom was all very smart, and these overhead cupboards in the bedroom again gave storage without making it feel cramped. The bow here is very novel, a tug-style flattish deck with a generator underneath. Stairs up from the bedroom slide to one side to give access to a small amount of cupboard space underneath. And an extra hatch to ease access meant lots of light. Next door was their wide beam, which won best wide beam in show, costing half a million quid and it's 70 feet long. Inside is like a posh apartment. Now this was the only boat whose lights caused flickering on camera, so apologies for that. There's the wine store. And a fish tank, obviously. It's all very smart, but not really to my taste, I think. The second bedroom was interestingly arranged, not with bunks, but two singles at 90 degrees to each other. Rather ingenious. Let's step back into the marquees and have a look at a new filter that caught my eye from River Canal Rescue. This fits in line between your bilge pump and skin fitting and turns your mucky oily water into clean water which is OK to pump overboard. You're not supposed to pump filthy bilge water straight into the canal. It's just a canister with replaceable cartridges. It costs about 90 quid and you can get the cartridges refilled rather than chuck them away. Certainly seems like an ingenious idea. Finally to our last boat builder. And this is Elton Moss, who make their stuff in the Czech Republic and then ship it over. You do see a lot of these on the canals. Oh, look, it's a reverse layout. Galley and open plan saloon, which incorporates an L-shaped dinette. That's additional seating and also a spare bed. Ceramic cassette toilet again. And this was the only boat we saw with a square shower cubicle. I'm not a fan of cross beds, and the sink beside it when the bathroom's just next door is a bit weird. Lots of storage here, but let's go and have a look at their wide beam. It's another massive boat, well equipped with solar, and it has this excellent rear deck for gin and tonic of an evening. Just imagine steering this thing. You would definitely want a big canal or river. Loads of people in here, so I didn't film the saloon, but it's large and open and comfy. That's just one part of the galley. And the bathroom. These modern wide beams always feel a bit like hotels to me. The master bedroom is a decent size, though you only get an escape hatch out to the bow, which is a shame. You could easily live on one of these, though. They have so much storage space compared to a narrowboat. Under the gin and tonic deck, there's a compact second bedroom with its own toilet and even a writing desk to complete the hotel feel. And so I'm back from outer space. And did I buy a new boat? No, sadly I didn't. I just do not have the money. When I recently talked about wanting to change my boat, loads of people saying, well, buy this one and buy that one. I don't have the money for a new boat. To be honest, I don't really have the money for another second-hand boat. It does occur to me that if I finally got round to writing that canal book which people have said I ought to do, and then if every one of my subscribers bought a copy and I made a quid off every copy, well then maybe I could get myself another boat. But for the time being, I'm not buying another boat, whether new or used, because I'm out cruising, so I've postponed the whole new boat thing. I did, however, buy a couple of things at the Crick Show, to start with a new fridge freezer. The old fridge, I'm pretty sure, came when the boat was originally fitted out, which means it's 20 years old, the door was rusting, it didn't really keep anything very cold, and it had no freezer. It had a little icebox compartment, but it was rubbish at keeping anything cold, and just the normal fridge part was fairly rubbish as well. And it was really noisy. Anyway, yada yada. So I spotted this fridge freezer, which actually has a separate freezer compartment, and it was um, 
a, a pretty good deal as 12 volt fridge freezers go. They are ferociously expensive, but this was the show demo unit. So I've taken that away off their hands and as an X display unit, got a bit of a discount. And I'm really pleased with it so far. Not only is it actually keeping stuff cold in the fridge section, but I've got ice cubes. Ice cubes, yes, for my drinks over the summer. And I can have ice cream. This is a whole revelation, a new world opening up to me. Uh, as well as I can now go down the frozen food aisle in the supermarket. This is, this is going to be transformative, I tell you. I'm ridiculously excited about having a fridge freezer on board. The other thing I bought is some new batteries. The 310, yeah, 310 amp hour leisure batteries that I currently have have dates on them saying 0609, which is either June 2009 or I suppose if it's the American date format, September 2006. Either way, they're at least 10 years old and I'm pretty sure they are not holding much of a charge. I'm fairly convinced that the reason I get through each day is because the solar panels are just bringing in enough power to run everything during the day and then all the batteries have to sustain is the um, fridge overnight, which they can just about do. But they're knackered, they're old, and I have bought three new lead carbon batteries. This is a fairly new battery technology as far as I can tell, and I, I don't know of any other narrowboaters that have got them. I looked on the forums, lots of people saying, has anybody tried these? And everybody's saying, no, let's wait for some other gullible fool to try them and we'll see how they get on. Well, hello, I'm a gullible fool, perhaps. So I've bought these batteries. I uh, haven't installed them yet because I'm waiting for the company that sold them to me to give me the correct charging voltages. You have to program your solar controller and your mains charger to have the correct charge profile. And so far, the company that sold them have only managed to tell me what the float voltage is and not what the absorption voltage is. And I need to know that. And the data on the data sheet for the batteries doesn't specify it and it's a bit confusing. There's going to be a whole vlog about these batteries once I've got them in and I've played with them a bit and got everything set up. The advantage of these lead carbons is they are a bit like lithiums in they take a charge really quickly and they can deliver a lot of charge very quickly. But the advantage they have over lithiums is they're about a fifth of the price, frankly. 100 amp hour battery cost me 200 quid. That's each. I bought three of them. So it's been a, a pretty expensive weekend. But 200 quid for a 100 amp hour battery versus 500 to 1000 pounds for the equivalent lithium battery and lithiums can't be charged if they get too cold because they're sensitive little things whereas these ones are just like ordinary batteries so you've got many of the pros of the lithiums in these lead carbons but without the hefty cost is there a drawback i don't know i i really don't it's a bit of an experiment this an expensive experiment but i shall find out I'm going to stop talking there. I'll do a dedicated video about the batteries as and when. That's it for this video. I know it was a long one and well done you if you got to the end. Award yourself a gin and tonic, maybe with some ice in it. Cheerio!